Hi, I'm Greg Paulson at Zometry, and I want you to do something for me. Look to your left. Now look to your right. You probably just saw about a dozen injection molded parts. Injection molding is the number one way to make plastic parts in mass production, and Zometry offers this service. Our industry expert, Travis Minyard, is here to talk to you about best practices when designing for injection molding and how to get the most out of this awesome process. And here's Travis. Hi, my name is Travis Minyard. I'm an application engineer for injection molding at Zometry. I have over 28 years in the injection molding field. So today I'm going to show you some design tips on how to design for injection molding and some of the common mistakes. When you don't have coring inside of your part, you have an uneven wall thickness and you also have uneven cooling within the part as well. So you will get sink marks within the part. And because you have more material, there's more volume of material to cool, and therefore you have an increased cycle time. The more cycle time, the more it'll cost you. You also have differential shrinkage because the part will have a different shrink rate at the thick sections, and your part will go out of tolerance. The part I'm showing you here, it's a four by four inch box. I shaved off two ounces of material by putting this coring in the back here. So not only did this improve the weight and cost of the material, but it also will reduce your cycle time and you have more of an even wall thickness throughout. Draft is basically angled wall sections. The reason you need to have draft on an injection molded part is that if you don't have draft, the part will not come out of the mold smoothly and it'll leave scrape marks. Also, if your part is textured or has some kind of geometry, if it's not drafted, it'll rip it right out. So here is a part that is not drafted. If you were to mold this, it would scrape the inner and outer features and then this coring in the rear here, the, the part would not come out. It would literally interlock. Here, this part is drafted at one degree and it would come out of the mold easily. Um, here's a part that basically is die locked in three ways. So if I were to run a draft analysis on this part, on that plane, everything red means it's die locked. So if you look at the three holes here, half those holes are die locked and half of these holes are die locked and the ones in the middle are not die locked. That would need three different slides to pull out those three holes on different planes which would add cost to your mold tremendously. So if you look at this part, same part layout, what I did is I put all the holes on the same plane. So if you looked at the draft analysis, there's no red marks. That means this mold could be molded on an open and closed tool. This mold would be three times as cheap as the other part that was die locked. So here's a part I drew up. It has a undercut, some type of latch or locking feature. To mold this part like this, you would have to have some type of lifter that pulls this undercut here as the part ejects. With pass-through coring, you can do the same feature by basically cutting out the bottom here and have a piece of steel that comes up through the bottom and it would mold the same feature and all you would have is a slot on the other side. So to mold this same mold, let's say with this feature, you would save thousands of dollars because you wouldn't have to have that lifter there to pull that same feature out. A lot of times when I talk to the customer, they really don't need all that there. All they need is maybe a half shape. If I were to cross section this part, a lot of times I see stuff like this in here. If you had this feature on the outside of the tool, you would need some type of slide or some lifter to get this geometry out of the way. With this particular annular snap, if you needed this to pop out of the slide or pop out of the cavity or core, there is a way to do this. One, it depends on what type of material you're using. You can't do this with glass filled material or hard materials like polycarbonate. It'll shear this area off. But if you have something softer like nylon, maybe even PBT, polypropylenes, high density polyethylene, you can actually get this feature to snap out of the caviar core block. So I use the one to three rule. The width is three times as large as the height. Also you have a lead in and lead out radius. If you have anything sharp here, as this goes to eject and pop off, it'll shear this completely out. Everything but liquid crystal polymer shrinks. So let's pretend this plastic here shrinks at 20 thousandths inch per inch. When this mold is made, if this is four inches long, this mold cavity needs to be 80 thousandths bigger than the actual cat. So it shrinks down to the size you want. Really look at your shrink rates. You can find a lot of this stuff on MatWeb. They give you good shrink rate values, or at least an idea. Your best is to check with your supplier of the material, if you have one, to find out what kind of shrink rates you need to use. Generally, plastic always shrinks to its center, mass, or its centroid. 
But some plastics do shrink linearly though, just a warning there. Sometimes you run into a part that may shrink weird and you have a part like this that is pretty much symmetrical. So this is a core side and that you have four cores and a center core here. So a lot of questions I get is how do I know which side this will stick on? I would say the mold will probably open on this side here. But to guarantee that, I've actually created negative draft here to sort of guarantee that the part will stick on that side. Parting line is very important because you need to imagine how the part will split when the mold opens. So if you look at my design here, I drew the parting line right after this radius. I can't put the parting line here because the part will be now die locked. So I had to put it beyond the radius. So the main parting line of the mold would be right here. Something to always consider, you have to always imagine how your part is going to come out of the mold. A lot of times I see parts that have no parting line and uh, what it does is it, it just drives uh, more design costs or you end up having a real elaborate mold just to get the part out. You also have to imagine that the part should eject with no hindrance. Once again, if I have my parting line here, more than likely the part should come out perfect. Awesome. Thanks so much, Travis. So you can request a quote online at zometry.com for injection molding, as well as other processes including 3D printing and traditional machining, sheet metal and urethane casting. Uh, we have it all here. We want to be your one-stop shop for manufacturing on demand.